themselves from this realm Jesus himself was given the parable of the rich man and Lazarus is that true both of them died but they were alive again in another dimension so everlasting life is not a privilege of Christians everyone created by God has everlasting life the condition for everlasting life is that you pass through the womb of a woman once you are born of a woman the seed of Abraham, the seed of Adam, you have everlasting life. Are we together? The word there is not even eternal. The word translated there is called Zoe. By the time John the Beloved, when you look at the progression of his revelation and growth, when we get to the epistle of John, he now begins to call it the life of God. John had grown the life of God. Zoe is the Greek word. Is a quality of life. Great men like Papa Hagen wrote books. In fact, there is a book by him called Zoe. Um, many of them say it is the God kind of life. Now, I respect their opinion. Remember, revelation is progressive. At the time they had this revelation, they call it the God kind of life. But according to the authority of scripture and they I ever beg to differ it is not the eternal. God kind of life it is the very life of God are we together now God did not give us his kind of life he gave us his very life the Bible says he that is joined to Christ we are going there shortly is one spirit he did not give us a type of his Holy Spirit it's his very spirit the same spirit that was in Jesus is the same spirit that is in us. There are not many of them and he just gave us a type. No, no. Is that true? When he said, I will send you another comforter, is the word the paraclet. Alos paracletos. Alos means of the same, the exact same one. Heteros means another kind, but of the same tribe. So when he says, I send you another comforter, an extension of me, Listen carefully. Now, when we come to Christ, the Bible lets us know the condition of the fallen man. Paul was mentoring the church in Rome and he said, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What glory is that? You would have to go back to the book of the beginnings to help you understand the state of man as designed by God. We considered a bit of that yesterday. Are we still together? There are three things that God gave man that made him the zenith of his creation. Adam now. Number one, God gave man dominion. What is dominion? Sovereign power over the entire creation. He mandated man to be head over his creation. That everything he created would be subject to man. Number two, God gave man something that we would learn in the Pauline epistle called righteousness. We're discussing doctrine now. Righteousness. E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability or the capacity to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of inferiority, and without a sense of condemnation. But I define righteousness as the very nature of God. It is your legitimate authorization to stand before God. Righteousness. Man had that. The third thing that God gave man was his spirit. And God breathed upon that man. He was not just breathing a human spirit to enter him. For man was first created spirit. I hope you know that when God was giving this man dominion mandate, he did not have a body. That was why, that's why the dominion mandate is not for the male. Because the woman was still in the man when he was said, be fruitful. He was speaking to Adam. Are we together now? When we read Genesis 1 verse 2, God now molded dust and transferred that spirit into that dust. And man became that living soul. 
man is spirit but according to the law of territory it's illegal for a spirit to operate in this realm without a human body for you to operate in any territory you must be made of the same material of that territory is that true is the reason why demons are illegal occupants because they do not have authorized bodies to function it's also the reason why they look for men or they look for anything created out of when the bible says god made man from the dust of the earth it doesn't mean god used sand to make man it means he sourced the materials for his body from the elements of the ecosystem that means your body should be compatible to trees to water to wind it means none of them should hurt you if they hurt you a spirit is manipulating them because your body was created to be at peace with your ecosystem are you listening to me now please pay attention what we're, we're discussing the divine life it's true you would notice a parallel operation between the human body and even your ecosystem let me give you a few number one your body is made of 70% water. The same way the earth is made of 70% water. You see, there is that similarity. Is that true? The same way you can mow your lawn and it grows back. That's the same way the human hair works, isn't it? You can cut it, it grows back. Just like grass. The same way your bones, after many years, are still there. It's the same way rocks live for many, many years. You can carbon date rocks and see that they are probably millions of years there is a parallel that means the wind should not hurt you so when there is something called airborne disease waterborne disease there is a spirit manipulating them water should not hurt you listen the same water that is that is killing people is in you and yet it does not hurt you the same air that is hurting people is the one that you breathe to give you life that is the reason why satan too uses them to destroy you because if the elements don't cooperate with him even him cannot do anything about it he will have to use these elements listen when you understand what i'm teaching you don't tempt me in the name of jesus <laughs> i reject this temptation in jesus name it's true the supernatural can only find expression in this realm when it is in partnership with the elements of this realm even the Holy Spirit, if he's to enter this earth, he will have to be in the similitude of a dove or light or fire or come upon a human body. Are you seeing that now? Yes. And so, man was created to be at peace with this system. Remember three things. Don't forget. Number one, that God gave man dominion, sovereign control, stewardship and may i say this that the dominion god gave man is not absolute dominion there are two levels of dominion there is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion the dominion man received is shared dominion is that true yes shared dominion is the kind of dominion that a tenant gets when he pays rent it is his house even though the landlord owns the house but he has a right to call it my house and even the landlord will have to respect him from the time he pays the rent it is the landlord's house but he cannot come in and just open the door he will have to respect that man from that day because there was a legitimate ground upon which the man can say my house even in front of the landlord you are welcome to my house and the landlord does not say you are making a mistake because it is his house yet it is the landlord's house you understand that now yes so when he says the earth has he given to the sons of man when we say this is our territory we are not lying even though the earth is the lord's so we have shared dominion and we have absolute dominion absolute dominion talks of ownership shared dominion talks of stewardship but both of them refer to authority and control are we learning something this morning so God gave man dominion he gave man righteousness he gave man the Holy Spirit so when man fell what do you think he lost if God gave man these three things these three things God gave man 
is what separates him from every other creation if man loses these three things there is no reason why creation should respect him again whoever has this tripartite combination of dominion the righteousness of god and the presence of the spirit of god qualifies to be the representation of god within that sphere when man fell these were the three things he lost if you don't know what man lost you will not know what redemption was made to restore you see when jesus came this is what he came to restore these three things that man lost man lost dominion he lost righteousness he lost the holy spirit who was the representation of the life of god so jesus walks to the earth now and he says i have come for a reason to bring reconciliation and for 30 years he went through all that process and then his passion would begin from the communion the bible lets us know that he broke bread i don't want to go into the whole theological explanation of those sacraments of the communion 